A few months ago, Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org dropped the bombshell that we shouldn't be adding bananas to our smoothies because of something called polyphenol oxidase, or PPO for short. This is a defence mechanism which is part of a plant's immune system, which when exposed to oxygen, the polyphenol oxidase can oxidise polyphenols and affect their absorption by our body. So what happens when you add a banana to berries or cocoa in a smoothie? Well, a series of experiments showed that polyphenol flavonoids can plummet by up to 80 to 90% when bananas are included in the mix. Bananas contain the highest levels of PPOs, but frustratingly, there are other fruits and vegetables that contain them. So is there a simple rule to tell which fruits and veggies we should not be using in smoothies? Well, Dr. Gregor's going to tell us next. But stay tuned to the end of the video as I do something slightly unusual for me, which is cite someone who has a completely different take on this research. Anyway, let's first hear Dr. Gregor. So our prunes are days high in PPO. Ha <laughs> ha, PPO. For anyone who's like, well, what are you talking about? Polyphenol oxidase, like bananas, any other fruits or just bananas to worry about. Okay, so you can tell something has as high PPO by the fact that whether it uh, it turns brown. Prunes, dates, prunes. I don't think either have polyphenol oxidase, so you can throw them in smoothies. Just take the pits out first any other fruits or just bananas oh well so apples as i talked about in the webinar apples right apples turn brown when you cut them open and uh vegetables like white mushrooms turn brown what else turns brown those are the ones that pop up eggplant mushrooms avocado potatoes apples pears and bananas are therefore all examples of what dr gregor is describing interestingly he also made the point that we probably shouldn't be adding bananas to our oatmeal and berries or anything with cocoa in because mixing in the stomach may have a similar effect to the smoothies so he stopped adding bananas to any meal that has high polyphenols but what about eating mushrooms with a high polyphenol meal well, thankfully, cooking inactivates their PPOs. Now, before we all get too freaked out, Mike the Vegan had a much less severe take on this research than Dr. Gregor did. And on reviewing all the evidence, Mike did not feel there was enough evidence to stop using bananas in smoothies. So perhaps a slightly controversial ending to this video is, if the only way you can get a smoothie down with tons of greens and other beneficial fruits and veggies is by adding some banana, it's my opinion you should continue to do this, as there are so many other wonderful benefits besides the flavanols in fruits and vegetables. Vegetables. However, if you don't mind either way, then I would leave out the bananas. But now I really want to hear from you. Do you agree with Dr. Gregor's stance? And therefore, will essentially only eat bananas on their own, away from smoothies and other fruits and veggies? Or do you take a more relaxed view? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'd also love if you could share your smoothie recipes that don't include bananas, as I'm finding it hard to replicate that smooth consistency they normally give it. But having said all of that, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn may blow your mind with his take on smoothies. Click this next video to hear his unexpected take on green smoothies versus cooked greens.